In this special episode from a recent presentation of mine, I'll show you how to take Google Analytics data, Google Search Console, and Google Tag Manager, combine them together so you can make better decisions to grow your company. All right, so I'm assuming we all have websites here. We're pretty modern, right? Yeah, everyone's got a website, great. So how these tools work, essentially Google Analytics is that everyone knows what it is, right? It's a data collection tool that helps you understand what people are doing on your website to help you make better decisions on how to improve it and for your greater mar online marketing as a result. Search Console is more or less the same, but it's more so focused on your organic search positions and rankings in non-paid Google search, plus also issues and errors that could be holding your website back from actually ranking in organic Google search. Tag Manager is a little bit different. Think of it as like the glue that you can use to bring all of these scripts and tags. I've just got two here, Do Google Tag Manager, any marketing tag, script, Facebook Pixel, remarketing, HubSpot, LinkedIn Insights, everything can be integrated into Tag Manager and then fired directly into your website, controlled and manipulated on when and where you want this information and data to be captured. I'll show you why that's important shortly. So basically, why do you care? Well. There's, you know, we live in a world of information and live, and live in a world of data, particularly in online um, advertising and marketing. Data is useless unless you can't turn that data into actionable insights that then turn into results that can grow your company. This is what this presentation is about. It's not about the tools, it's about how you can use these tools to grow your company. As I mentioned, all of these tools are absolutely useless if they're not calibrated to achieve your greater business growth goals. This is the most important thing to get right. So there's some questions that you really got to answer. Even if you've gone ahead, you have a website or a company up and running, you've got all these tools uh, up and running. There's three key things, regardless of what stage you are, your pre-startup, your post-startup, your scaling that you need to have answered. Number one, how much do I want to grow? Number two, what are the results required to achieve this growth? Number three, how will I measure these results so I can get the information that's gonna allow me to adjust and evolve my online strategy and my greater business strategy as a result. How do you answer these questions? Well, this is how we do it. We do two exercises. We do this with every single client that we work with. Number one, we conduct what's called an opportunity analysis. I'll walk that through with you shortly and what that exactly means. Number two is so we create an online KPI roadmap there's no point in doing all this online stuff if we don't have goals and objectives and targets to align them with. And these are the two most important things to get right before you get started with these platforms. All right, what's an opportunity analysis? I'm gonna give you a, a, a bit of a live example here, a bit of a scenario to explain this. Okay, we're coming up to end of financial year, probably for the guys that are up and running, guys and gals that are up and running, you're thinking of work, what do I want to achieve in the next 12 months, in the next financial year? This is a great opportunity to do this if you haven't done this yet in your company. Let's say, hypothetically, in the next 12 months, I want to increase new revenue by 600,000. I know my average customer value or my t goal average customer value is 25,000. That means I'm going to need two new customers per month for the next 12 months at 25,000 to hit that $600,000 Revenue, new revenue growth goal. I know my lead to sale conversion rate. I've got an offline sales process. So, you know, you can always, I'll show you how to change this for e-commerce. I've got an offline sales process. My lead to sale conversion rate is 50%. One in every two leads convert into a client. That means I need four new leads per month, convert half of them to get my new, two new customers per month. I know I can see that my average website conversion rate is at 4%. That means I'm gonna at least need 100 new visitors to my website every single month if I wanna convert four of them to get me, sorry, 4% to get my four leads. If you ever consider things like paid advertising, you can use tools like Google and Facebook and even LinkedIn to give your average cost per click figures based upon the ad sets and keywords that you wanna be targeting to get that 100 um, people to your website. Let's say the, just for argument's sake, that average CPC is seven bucks. That means my cost per acquisition, which is the cost to achieve this against that, and that is $350 per acquisition. Not bad if you're making 25,000 on the back end, right? So that means my return on advertising spend, if I hit all of these numbers, is 7,143%. Not bad, yeah? 
But the biggest mistake I see businesses do is they dive into this stuff. Yeah, let's throw some stuff up on Facebook. Let's throw some money. Let's boost this crap. They haven't actually taken a step back to think about how are these pillars going to fund? What are the goals and targets I need to hit for this to be a fundamentally profitable growth exercise for my business? And that's what an opportunity analysis does. Let's move on now to the second step, which is the online KPI roadmap. Okay, so the business goal, increase revenue by 600K in 12 months. Our target volume to achieve this is two new customers per month at the $25,000 average uh, lifetime value of the customer. So I'm going to use this as an example of a business that has a software as a B2B software as a service business that has an offline sales process. Okay. I need to then get my four leads per month. That means I want two, at least two demo consultation signups. This is assuming that every demo consultation signup actually leads to them getting onto a phone and you doing this demo. This is not always the case. So you can actually delve deeper. Um, in a more realistic scenario. I'm just going broad strokes here so everyone understands. I also want to get, uh, I, you know, average get a couple of inquiries per month via contact and direct email. I want to achieve one there and I want to have someone call me up directly on the phone that's going to result in them signing up for a demo consultation. There's my four leads per month. Now we understand what are the KPIs my website actually needs to achieve for it to perform as a growth vehicle for my business. Then we start looking at how we build in the tracking layer, okay? Demo registrations. I have a website where people can go through and sign up for a demo. I'm going to attribute that demo sign up to a goal. And once they've gone through and picked a date, they're then redirected to a thank you page that has a unique URL, which I can then set a conversion tracking goal on in analytics. I'll show you how to do this shortly. Consultation registration, it's the same things. People not sure they want a demo, they're not sure I send them through, I offer them a consultation, a free 30 minute strategy session. Same objective as this, different URLs so we can track the performance between the KPIs. Same with the contact form to attract that KPI. Same with the inquiry calls, click to call numbers can be tracked. They're not as good as if you're using something called a dynamic phone tracking number. We use this on our advertising clients, which means a dynamic number is loaded on the ad group and on the website. When that number is called, it then attributes that acquisition to the ad group and even to the keyword level. That's a little bit more advanced, but that's the better way to do it. Um, the inquiry email is, for example, if you have like a mail to link, someone clicks on it, opens it up in the browser to send you through an inquiry through there. You can use click event tracking to track all of this. I'll show you how to do that shortly. Before I move on, is this all making sense so far? Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Another thing you might want to consider is also your segmentation. This is more so on your reporting and how you then understand, slice and dice and disseminate this information. Let's say you have uh, your site ranks relatively well in organic search. You want to compare your organic acquisitions against your paid acquisitions. You have a global business, two primary audiences in the United States and Australia. You want to see acquisition by country. Um, you want to see new visitors and then repeat visitors, repeat visitors, how many times they need to come back to you before they actually convert to a goal and then a mobile and desktop bit adjustment or a mobile and desktop comparison to see which mediums result in the best conversion. That's really, you can pick and choose. These are the ones we usually go with um, as a base to start off on our reporting. So there you have it. That was how to take Google Analytics, Google Search Console and Tag Manager, combine them together to make better decisions to grow your company. As always, if you've enjoyed this episode, please like it and let me know in the comments below if you have any questions regarding anything that I've covered so far, I'd be more than happy to help. And if you need help with digital marketing and growing your business, please check out my digital agency, Web3. I'm James Banks from Web3, and I'll see you in the next episode.